it's not going into place straight away. It's these pins getting in the way, so you need to wipe them out a little bit more or center it a little bit better. Once it's on, re tighten the pins. They don't have to be very tight, just so it touches. Yeah? Then the center bolt is screwed up. Get it good and tight but not too tight, otherwise you're going to have a big job carrying it off afterwards. Now the mount head is nice and secure on the tripod legs. Now you'll notice that I had both clutches undone here. When you're transporting equatorial heads, it's always advisable to do that, especially ones which are driven that have gears on the inside. Um, if you lock them up during transport, if something's leaning against them, you're putting strain on the gears on the inside, and you, you could mesh them up, you know, it's not very good. So if you're transporting it, unlock the gears always. Once it's secured to the tripod, then you can lock everything back up. And if you notice, I've got everything kind of lined up and perpendicular. Um, you can do so. Sometimes there's uh, setting circles here or two index marks like there are on Tazimuth mounts. It's always good practice to have it in this kind of configuration. Uh, usually people call this the home position. Yeah. Can I ask a question here? Yeah. Um, do you want, do you lined up so that, for instance, the face is um, on a tripod leg or between a tripod leg? Or uh, you mean when, it, when it's facing the north side? For instance, this one, that's north. We we'll say that's north. Well, this one here, this is, this is the axis, the IRX, the um, right center axis, otherwise known as IRX, is the one that you want to point north. Yeah. So, so that needs to in this around. case, okay. it would be, oh, sorry, okay. it would be in this case, it would be like that. But I'd also have yeah. a tripod. It doesn't matter whether it's over the leg or the tripod. Okay. Yeah, the important thing right. is, okay. that's a good point, Nick, that's something that's cropped up. The mount that we're using for demonstration purposes is one of the larger ones, which does have a lug on it, so that it's got a northerly direction. The smaller mounts, this is an EQ1 here, uh, and even some of the bigger ones than this, don't have a preferred direction, so you can just turn the head of the mount and point in any direction. That's right. So, um, like we were saying, the, the important thing is this needs to be pointing north. Yeah. Um, later on, when we do the polar alignment, you see there's a, it's actually a polar scope in there, and this axis is hollow, and we're going to align this axis so it's in perfect alignment with Polaris, and that will match the tilt of the Earth, and make it a lot easier to track things uh, through the sky. But we'll get to that later on. We have to know how to set it up first. So we just put. That on. So we've got the mount head on, it's nice and steady on the tripod legs, but we'd still need to... <coughs> we've got the spreader. <coughs> to put the spreader on, you take off this bottom, bottom bolt and the washer. The spreader goes back up. On some spreaders, you've got something to hold a handset, some you don't, it all depends on uh, which model you have. It really doesn't matter where that is, it's just a matter of personal preference. So you put it in, push it up, washer goes on, then the bolt. Sometimes when you're doing this, you'll see the tripod legs spread out on their own. Don't be alarmed, that's perfectly normal. Like there. Now the whole thing is really rigid and solid. Yeah? The tripod legs are not going to go in and out, it's going to stay exactly where it is now. So, Next thing is a counterweight shaft. On this one, it's retractable. On other smaller ones, it screws in. Yeah? Um, on the bottom, this is pretty important because I've, all, I've nearly lost toes because of this. Uh, the restraining bolt on the bottom, always use this. That's very, very important. Yeah? The amount of times I've been lax and it slid off then because your feet are right there. This is why I wear still, still toe caps. Still toe caps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't want five kilograms dropping on your leg. So that would just go on there. You'd secure it whenever a weight goes on there. I don't, it doesn't matter if you're just bending over to pick up the next one. It's always good practice to put it back on just in case. You never know. You might not tie it up correctly. Something might be wrong. You don't want to squash toes. So. Most of the mount is set up now. I'm not going to put the counterweights on just yet. Yeah? Um, now, just another couple of things before we put telescopes and counterweights. Why don't you put the weight on now? Uh, that's um, I'm gonna, that was going to come in the polar alignment. 
Right, uh, the reason why I'm not putting the uh, telescope and counterweights on just yet, when you polo align the telescope, you'll be using these two screws here, these two here, to move the whole head up or down, left and right, to get this axis in line. If I weigh down the top of the telescope, uh, the, the mount with the counterweight in the telescope, uh, you're running a really big risk of bending the bolts. They're not designed to shift that much weight. Yeah? So always, when using these kind of adjustment bolts, see even on the small one, it's the same thing. Best not to have anything on the telescope first, so it's got a nice light load to deal with. Okay? But we'll come to that later, and I won't get it, do everything in sequence. So, the next thing for the telescope, we'll just make it all the electronics ready. Now, if you've got a handset, just plug it in. There's a holder, put it there. In this instance, I'm using a power pack. Some people use mains, lead acid battery pack, anything else. So, I'm making that ready, make sure the light is on how it's going through, and we'll just plug that in, and that's the end of the setup for the time being, yeah, it's now ready to receive counterweights, it's now ready to receive the telescope, and, but before we do any of that, we do the polar alignment first, yeah, so that's an equatorial setup, yeah? it takes a little while, longer than the ultasimuth, but you get more out of it afterwards, if you get much higher tracking, the accuracy, if you want to do long exposures, an equatorial mount can handle that when the ultasimuth mount, uh, mount cannot. Yeah. Is everybody happy with what total alignment means, or does anybody want some more detailed information? Just uh, a bit more review, just, to, just in case. Okay. Sorry, second. Polar, okay. polar, polar alignment. Polar alignment. Is it with Polaris? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, it's not polarized light or anything? No, no, no not polarized light. All oh, right. Yeah. Basically, on an ultasimuth mount, the axes of rotation are up and down, and left and right, yep. but objects cross the sky in a curved path, and basically, uh, because the Earth rotates on its axis, it's a simple motion, but it just makes objects appear to follow a complicated path across the sky. If you take those two axes of rotation that are 90 degrees to each other, and turn one of them so that it's parallel to the Earth's axis, as the Earth turns one way, if you turn your telescope mount the other way, it counteracts the Earth's rotation telescope stays pointing in the same direction in space. It's a difficult thing to get your head around because it's sort of three dimensional, but once you do it in practice and see it in action, it falls into place very quickly and then you never need to worry about it again. Because it's motorized. It's motorized. Even on a, mount, uh, motorized. a manual um, uh, equatorial mount, it does make it easier to follow it. Yeah. You don't even try to do it in the one axis. Just turn so what, one what are we using? Uh, yeah, and that's what this is here. That axis there, as Nick was saying, the, the polar axis, the right ascension axis, is parallel to the axis. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those cases where, unfortunately in life, sometimes you do have to read the instruction book. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody does it. Nobody likes to do it. But this is one area where it really is worth doing it.